One option that gives you a lot of flexibility when working in Photoshop is smart filters. Now, a smart filter is a filter applied to a smart object. It's essentially a non-destructive filter. Now, you're used to non-destructive filters. It's what you have in After Effects and inside of Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, other applications. Usually though, in Photoshop, you don't have that flexibility unless you take an extra step. Here's how it works. I've got an image here and I can right click and say convert to smart object. What that essentially does is embeds a full resolution copy inside the layer. This means that you got a lot of flexibility. For example, you could size that image down, making it really tiny and apply the transformation, close and save the document and reopen it back up. And you could still scale that image all the way back up to its original size with no quality loss. The other cool thing, of course, is the smart filters we already mentioned. This allows you to apply a filter, and when you hit OK, it's still modifiable. So you can double click on it and tweak the values, or click the blending arrows here and actually change how the filter blends with the original image, such as a nice soft light mode here to give it sort of a glow. Notice there we're getting a nice pro mist type effect. And you got the ability to use the mask here to paint out or hide things. So a lot of flexibility. You can combine multiple filters and even stack up the look. So let's press D for default colors and we'll choose filter, sketch, halftone pattern. I can go ahead and apply sort of a line look here. Get a little bit bigger size and play with the contrast and then blend that in. Just click the line there and we could change how that blends. I'll go with multiply to drop out the brights and we sort of get a scan line look. If I want, I could even change the stacking order of those two filters so they render in a different order. And that's a pretty cool look there. We've sort of made a surveillance look like it was through a camera lens. But we could tweak this continuously and that's the benefit of smart filters. Turn them off and back on, change their order, adjust the value, double click, and it's as simple as jumping back in, and you could play with things like make those size thicker there for the lines, hit OK, and it updates. So a lot of flexibility. Plus, you have that ease of swapping out the contents of the smart object. So for example, here's a look that I came up with, sort of a cartoon look, and this is built with a couple of layers. We had our original image, and I applied a stamp filter. There it is. Play with the light and dark balance and the smoothness, and it sort of looks like a rubber stamp. But instead of putting that in normal mode, I drop that down to overlay, which sort of blends the values together, and I could lower the opacity to taste. That's looking pretty good. Tossed on a gradient map and a pattern layer with just a little bit of texture put on top, and it gives me a cool look. But because this is a smart object here, I could easily swap it out for another image. I'll just choose Layer, Smart Objects, Replace Contents. Piece of cake to then point it at another photo. And hit Place. And it swaps out. Now in the case of this image, it's a different resolution, so I'll just need to scale it, but that's easy with that smart object. Just press Command T for free transform, or on a PC, Control T. When we scale, easiest way to do it is hit Command or Control Zero to zoom out, and I'll just hold down the Shift and Option or Shift and Alt keys to scale towards the center. That looks good. Press Return. The smart filter is reapplied, and there's all the looks. And we've got a pretty cool comic book look going. I'll tweak this a little bit further by adding the halftone pattern. And we'll put sort of the circle pattern in there, or better yet, the dot pattern. Get those nice and big with a little bit of contrast. And let's blend those. Put that in multiply mode to drop out the lights and lower the opacity down a bit. And we got a pretty cool halftone pattern happening there, giving us really an illustrated comic book type look. So, a lot of flexibility. 
The cool thing about these smart filters is that they're infinitely customizable. Change them, swap them, reorder them, tweak them as much as you want. And then if you want to speed the design up, you can just swap out the contents of the layer by choosing Smart Object, Replace Contents, and point it at a new image. So it can really give you some great flexibility as you're designing inside of Photoshop. Automating Photoshop takes you inside a world where your images move and your processes automate using features and little known areas of Photoshop that only the experts know. Internationally known author and trainer Richard Harrington is your guide into the powerful world of automating Photoshop. And you can get it now, but only from the Creative Cal Master Series.